You guys were asking me to cover more stories that featured Bane fighting Batman, and it occurred to me, we never covered Nightfall. <laughs> the story where Bane originally broke Batman. So this actually takes place in Batman issue number 497. And originally Nightfall was a crossover between Batman and Detective Comics. But this opens up with literally Bruce Wayne essentially recovering only to find Bane has broken into Wayne Manor. Now, one of the things that I wanna specify here is that as part of Nightfall, there was technically a prelude. The prelude is not overly important. There were only really a few things that happened over the course of this. The whole prelude itself took place between Batman 484 to 491, and then Detective Comics 654 to 658. But in Batman 492, Batman fights the Mad Hatter. And in 493, he fights Victor's ass. But this all basically happened because Bane had traveled to Gotham City after being kind of haunted by a bat in his dreams, and then realizing Batman was the foe that he was symbolically supposed to face, to basically conquer any and all fears that he could have. And then in turn, he unleashed all the villains in Gotham from Arkham Asylum, and they just started running amok. Now in Detective Comics issue number 660, Robin fights Bane, but he's actually tricked into thinking that it's Killer Croc, but Killer Croc ultimately warns him about Bane, because Bane had previously fought Croc and then broke both of his arms. And so in Batman 496, the Joker and the Scarecrow basically confront Batman and then with Scarecrow's fear toxin, force Batman to kind of relive the death of Jason Todd. But all this happened over a pretty good period of time. And it was all designed to basically wear Batman down, right? To get him to the point where he was just easy pickings for Bane, which is exactly what happens. So by the time Bane gets back around here, Batman is essentially softened up. He's nowhere near as strong as he normally is. And so what's really cool is the conversation that you get here. When Bane reveals he knows the identity of Batman as being Bruce Wayne. Now, this is one of the reasons why a lot of people who see depictions of Bane in media, specifically like Tom Hardy and from that terrible old Batman movie from back in the day, that he's usually some kind of like a henchman or something like that. Bane is ridiculously intelligent. Like it's crazy how smart he is. And there have been multiple instances over the course of DC Comics where it's been alluded to that Bane is almost as capable as Batman is and sometimes just as capable as he is. Then in a lot of ways, he's almost Batman Batman's antithesis more than the Joker is. Again, it's a matter of interpretation, but still, right? That Bane says this Bruce Wayne is nothing but a mask and one which no longer serves any purpose. Although my mask still does. And so it's him basically saying, Bruce Wayne is your alter ego. You are really Batman. That's really who you are. There's no way for you to be anything other than that. And then of course, Bane reveals that he's taking a more concentrated form of Venom. Now we don't have to go into like the super complexities of Venom and its whole publication history. Just know that Venom is like the substance Bane uses to amp himself up. I know 99% of you know that. That statement's more for the 1%, <laughs> right? But at the end of the day, where Bruce Wayne says, like, I am very familiar with Venom, the response of Bane is, I think not. I was once made a guinea pig for an experimental improved concentrate of Venom. Trust me, no matter what your prior experience, you know nothing of my Venom. The sheer strength and ferocity now coursing through me is enough to break a man, any man, like a dead stick. And where Bruce asks, like, how did you know who I was? How did you figure out my identity? Which is something Bane did in the span of like three to six months, right? Bane's response, I've known you since I lived in the hell of a dark hole thousands of miles from here. Of course, referring to Santa Prisca, the prison that he was in while he was experimented on. And he says, I've known you in my dreams and I escaped from that hell, escaped from my dreams for one reason only to find you and to break you. Now, Bruce responds here and he asks, what has it all been about? Freeing the inmates of Arkham, watching me deal with them, watching them wear me down, was it all just to learn about me, to weaken me? And the response of Bane is, no. Gotham, the ultimate prize, you have it, and I want it. Now, this is where a lot of those depictions of Bane come from, right? A couple lines from the Nightfall storyline, because in a lot of ways, it does depict Bane as a very, very simple villain, a very basic guy, right? Like, I just wanna conquer Gotham City, right? That's it. And even Bruce Wayne is kind of surprised by that, right? He's like, all the deaths, all the wasted lives, it's been nothing but that. You'd kill just to rule this city. And the response of Bane is, I'd kill for anything. 
I'd kill to silence a grating voice, to darken the light in the eyes that dared look at me. And so it really shows that Bane is a merciless guy. But one of the other big differences here is unlike future depictions of Bane, where he seems a lot more cavalier with people's lives and he doesn't really care and just kind of crazy and nuts, the reality is Bane during this point in time was a lot more centered. He even practiced meditation, right? He was a very, very capable villain. And so at the end of the day, Bruce just musters what strength he can. And he's like, I've spent my life fighting your kind of madness and evil. And now that lifelong fight has brought me to death's door, my own door, Bane says, I would not be here otherwise. And that's when Batman says, I realize that. And I realize you may well be the single greatest source of madness and evil I've ever faced. And in that case, one more time. And he races into the fight. But just like what you saw, the fight between Tom Hardy's Bane and Christian Bale in The Dark Knight Rises, Batman never had a chance. This fight is a non-starter, right? Like, as soon as he shows up to hit Bane, he gets swatted away. And it's just like that, right? Like, Alfred's watching this go down. Batman's getting obliterated, right? Like, Batman tells him, like, Alfred, get out of here as fast as you possibly can. He's just getting thrown around. Now, that's what's so cool about this is because Batman's not at 100%. But I would argue even at 100% in this initial fight, Bane would still hold his own against Batman. He's done it time and time again. And so again, getting slapped around and thrown around like a rag doll, Alfred does the only thing he can do, which is taking off to get help. And that's when you even kind of get this clarity, right? The sort of narrative that's going on with us as this fight is taking place, where we're told this time is doomed, pushing too hard for too long, facing the madness of too many masks, bearing the brunt of too much violence, too much pain, already burned down and out from ends and every angle battered, bashed, and scarred from a thousand cuts and blows, tottering on brittle bones and lurching through vertigo for months now, ears buzzing and ringing, everything too bright and glittery, even in the dark. Too much punishment, overwhelming odds, passing blood for weeks, racing for death my whole life, every muscle sluggish, sluggish and trembling, all strength stretched and sapped, washed in weakness, mired in a slow motion panic of helplessness. And through it all, no sleep, no rest, even when movement itself was impossible, nothing but the mind's desperate urge to get off the floor and to strike back. Even when every uphill effort is wasted and futile, reality itself smashed and splintered like the rude death of an impossible dream, awakening again and again to nothing but agony, relentless and repeated. And then the crowning horror of shattered Arkham, spilling its mad guts into the long dark night of hopeless horror. A legion of crazed killers loosed on Gotham, too many and too much to fight. The toll too great, pride no longer an asset, only prelude to a fall, leaving me drained and depleted, utterly empty. And that's what's so crazy is because as this fight goes on, right, Alfred goes to try to grab Tim Drake. And this point, Bane's just toying with Batman. It's not even a fight anymore. It's not even a conflict of any real measure. It's you are nothing. You are a complete and total disappointment. Now, what Bane's talking about here, and this is what's so interesting, is when he was in Santa Prisca and he was having nightmares of a bat, word was also reaching his ears about the Batman of Gotham. And in a lot of ways, Bane had built Batman up in his own mind as being this almost mythical, indestructible figure. And in a lot of ways, that's how most criminals saw Batman, right? He was almost this kind of omniversal force of justice in the city of Gotham. And woe betide the poor soul who was committing a crime and crossed his path. And so Bane chasing Batman down was chasing down this mythical creature, only for Bane to confront Batman and then in turn, 
find him so easily toppled. But that's also the hubris of Bane. It is incredibly arrogant of Bane to show up to a guy whom he spent about a year softening up attack him at his absolute weakest and then say, you are a disappointment, right? Because of course it wouldn't be any measure of a challenge, but it also asks the question, if Batman at his absolute weakest is still no match for anyone like Bane, then at the end of the day, he's just a guy, right? He's just a human, easily defeated, just like anybody else. He doesn't live up to the mythos. And so even Bane asks, why don't you fight back? Why don't you do anything? And he's like, you've got no spine whatsoever. And while Batman is of course fighting back as best he can, that is just no real challenge at all. And so at the end of the day, Alfred finally makes it to Tim Drake. He grabs Tim, he tells him what's going on. He's like, get an ambulance, right? And in turn, they rush over to the Batcave. And finally, Batman throwing what few punches he can, as weak as he is, Bane counters every last one of them with no real effort whatsoever. He picks Batman up and he says, beg for mercy mercy, scream my name. And where Batman says, just go back to hell, the response of Bane, I am Bane and I could kill you, but death would only end your agony and silence your shame. Instead, I will simply break you. And he snaps Batman in half on his back. And he just says, broken and done. And that's it, right? Like he just leaves him. Now, of course, I'm not going to leave you guys hanging. <laughs> Because what follows after this is actually kind of funny, right? So what Bane ends up doing after defeating Batman is he goes up to the top of a building, right, in Gotham. He grabs Batman's body and he says, I am Bane, this city is mine. Batman is no more, I have destroyed him, I rule these streets, I am Gotham. And he just throws Batman off the building. Batman literally ragdolls down the side and onto the street, bleeding and broken. And this is the craziness about it all. It sends a message to the entirety of the criminal underworld. Everybody realizes what's going on here. There's a new player in town and he is not to be trifled with. And so the only thing that can be done is Alfred and Tim Drake showing up on the scene, snatching up Batman's body and racing away as fast as they possibly can. They basically end up getting back to the Bat Cave. Now, one of the guys that you see here that we haven't necessarily talked about is a guy by the name of Jean-Paul Valley, also known as Azrael. He was also part of the prelude to the Nightfall saga. And technically he was kind of brought about as what was essentially an assassin of sorts, working for an organization called the Order of Saint Dumas. He was basically activated and then in turn went on to become kind of a villain. For the most part, he's just sort of been reworking himself and joining Batman is basically an ally atoning for any past misdeeds that he may have engaged in. There's certainly more to his character than that, right? I mean, we're doing broad strokes here. Right, so all you super hardcore Jean-Paul Valley fans, the four of you who are out there, I know I'm not doing his character justice with that explanation. This is not a Jean-Paul Valley video. So here's the thing. Once they get back to the Bat Cave, the question is, how in the world do we get him back to some measure of normalcy? This guy's broken, right? He's got broken bones, his spine is severed. I mean, there's no conceivable way for this guy to come back. And so Tim Drake asks Alfred, what do we do? And Alfred's like, well, you know, I can fix him, but not with what I have here. He says, I need a drug called Decadron. It's specifically made for the treatment of spinal trauma. It's the only way to reduce the swelling, but only if it's administered in the next hour. Now, of course, Tim Drake races off without question to try to find a way to get this thing, but that's when you kind of get the other part of it, which is really more of a conversation between Alfred and Jean-Paul Valley, where Alfred tells him, look, do not tell Tim Drake. Without the Decadron, even if Master Bruce does awaken, he'll be paralyzed for life. So it's absolutely imperative that we get this. And so what ends up happening is Robin goes to visit Commissioner Gordon, who of course is reeling after the presumed death or at least the defeat of Batman and the real concern of like, what's gonna happen to crime in Gotham City? And Tim's like, I need your help with something, right? And Gordon's just like anything. And Tim's like, we need a drug called Decadron, that Batman might die without it and we need it fast. And Gordon's just like, I know exactly the spot. So he literally says, wait here. And he gets a hold of Harvey Bullock and he tells him like, you're gonna go to the hospital. And when you get there, 
there, there's gonna be a guy who's gonna come out of there with a box. Your job is to get that box. Now, of course, as soon as this doctor comes racing out, that of course, you know, Robin and uh, and Jean-Paul Valley grab the box, race off, they bring it back to the Batcave. And so they inject Batman with this Decadron. And the question that's asked by Tim Drake is, so what do we do next? And Alfred responds and he simply says, the hardest part, Master Drake, we wait and see if he recovers. With that being said, guys, we're gonna bring this video to an end. You guys never saw this in the, like, I, I totally left you guys in a cliffhanger. Let me know if you wanna see the rest of this down in the comments section, I'm kinda curious. And uh, yeah, because this is when Jean-Paul Valley becomes Batman and he is hardcore. But let me know what you guys think down in the comments and I will catch you all later. Peace.